Good evening, everybody, and welcome back to the Angry Cast and Fallout Shelter 2022. How are y'all doing? Uh, I'm going to be turning it over to uh, past me to do some audio commentary, but I figured I had a chance to come in here and do some work before we do that, and we have a couple of quests we want to get out there and uh, accomplish. But as you can see, nothing much has changed except for the fact that everything here, except for possibly the radio room, Possibly the radio room has... No, actually the radio room, too, has a full complement of uh, workers. All of my resource rooms are stocked to the gills. And I actually have uh, <laughs> six people in the crafting room wandering around waiting because for um, supplies in order to do so. But what I'm trying to get at is, is that I need to start shuffling some, some people around because I've also got another four people that have just completed all their trainings and they need to get into a room. Now, what I had been doing is taking people who were at level 50 and putting them down into to the uh, crafting area in order to do that. But I've run out of people to do that now, besides putting them into another room for crafting. Uh, so it's going to be some shuffling of the decks. I think I'm going to finally start putting some people into these top two uh, rooms who are level 50. And once they are in there, they will be able to keep the Death Claws from reaching this room for sure. And I don't have to keep sliding these guys over uh, to each room as they, they move on to the, you know, on their path. Uh, so that is one thing we're going to be doing. And as a, additionally, I'm going to have to start building out some more rooms, I think. But I don't want to, like, take out these training rooms just yet, because I'm still using them. We're also at capacity, so that means I could probably also build another residence room. But I'm not ready to do that just yet. That's more power being drawn. But I want to do some more. I think I need to definitely do some more um, hospital and uh, science center stuff. And I still also want to have that one lone cafeteria where <laughs> we will be able to use apply themes uh, for that. And I don't want to um, do that just yet because I don't have enough people to do all three rooms. That's 6, 12, 16 people that I need, of which I have four. Which I have four. But there are some people here. Uh, whoops, no. Some, I'm sorry. Some people over here that are just, you know, just going to be... So there's another four people as well. Uh, so, yeah, that's going to be the next thing. So, I'm going to go ahead and do all that, and I'm going to turn it over, like I said, to the audio commentary guy uh, in his car, like a jackass, and let him tell you some, uh, some information while we do some quests. So, we'll see you back in a bit. Good evening, everybody. Welcome back to the Angry Cast and Fallout Shelter 2022. How y'all doing? Uh, it's going to be a rough couple of weeks here coming up. Um, I'm I'm not sure this will actually make it out this week, and I apologize if it didn't. Uh, it's <laughs> so you know. Let's get a quick recap, and we'll then do do our thing. Talk about uh, let's see here. Yeah, um, back in March, of course, we you know had a little problem where Megan broke her arm, and she's fully mended. Everything's good. We're good there. But also for the last three years, I've been trying to get moved into a new house. We bought a house back in 2019 began working on it and then one thing after the other kept happening we kept finding more problems and we had not been able to just move in when we wanted to uh, that's all changed uh, either by you know the fact that we run out of money or <laughs> or we're done to where we want to you know be uh, we're finally able to move in now we've been having a lot of problems the last few weeks trying to get uh, moved in like we knew we had to move we, we wanted to move but it was just like we couldn't get there because we either had no way of just doing anything. We didn't have any people. We've been, you know, searching high and low to try to find a way to do all this. We've got two houses we have to move in. And uh, we, we weren't able to do so. So we were kind of like, okay, fine. Well, we know we need to, I need to sell my house because it's like it's, we're under a time crunch here. Um, not to, you know, give you my financial woes here. But I was able to do work and you know buy and do work on this house and pay off my mortgage and do all these other things because uh the unfortunate thing was my father had died and the man was uh heavily uh invested into some life insurance policies that really helped a lot uh you know as far as taking care of things um but then we hit 
you know, 2019, we bought the house. We're like, okay, we want to move in. Oh, wait, there's this problem. We fix that problem. Oh, wait, there's another problem. We fix that problem. Every time we uncover one problem, we just keep finding more things that were wrong. That it's, you know, hey, we're not moved in. We have the ability to do that work now so that we don't have to sit here and move everything into, uh, you know, one room or everything, anything else. We don't have to shift stuff around. Uh, both her, uh, Megan and myself have had horror stories about, you know, growing up saying, oh my gosh, when we had to redo this, we were like living off of uh, saw, you know, saw horses and boards and a door and that's how we ate and everything in the basement, blah, blah, blah. We didn't want to do that. So we had the ability to just go ahead and, and do all the work before we moved in so that we didn't have to be in the way of, of any contractors, anything like that. All right. Well, that was 2019. 2020, of course, you know, the next two years, we had a pandemic situation and we lost our contractor and then thing on top, you know, after that, top of that. And then as things got, you know, better down the road, then, of course, all the inflation happened. So now we're like, you know, fine, we got two years, we've got people back on track and now we can't do any work because, my gosh, the price of uh, PVC pipe exploded. You know, thank God we didn't have to do the floors in 2022. We did the floors in 20. Uh, 20 and 2019 because we saved ourselves a harm and a leg there but it's just like everything we tried to get done it's there was one more problem and unfortunately we've run out of money and now i'm trying to get into this house and we you know we still have things we need to do but there are things that we can do after we've moved in because they're outside or infrastructure things that we can take care of well it's not going to impact us so that brings us up to July, and we started look, talking about putting the house up on the market. Because as soon as I get my house up on the market and sold, I am in a better position. I'm not spending a ton of money every month and every year on managing three properties. And you know, Megan herself has a house to, to get rid of as well, but she's currently leasing it to, to a couple of people that were uh, in a tight spot and needed a place to rent. I mean, they're just they're pretty much saving us from having to pay uh, utilities, but they're not paying any rent. Because one reason or another, there's just one, you know, they've had about as good of luck as we do. So now we are at the situation where it's like, okay, fine, we want to move, but we can't because we don't have any money. So I secured a loan and got all this done, and I'm like, okay, now we're burning through that money to keep me afloat, to keep everything else afloat, paying all three houses, you know, bills and, and utilities and whatnot. And then, okay, we still got to get moved, we still have to do the work. Well, my house needed a little bit of work. And I apologize for talking fast, but the coffee has kicked in. Uh, my house needed work, so I had to get a contractor to do a little bit of work around the house so I could make it sell ready. Long story there, but damage that happened to the house while I was unemployed that needed to be fixed. So now we are, <laughs> it's like, okay, fine, we're good. Now let's just get moved and, we're, and we'll be in better position. And then we tried to like get uh, a um, moving company and they're like, well, it's going to be $3,000 to move you. I'm like, are you, are you kidding me? $3,000? We're only moving like half the furniture out of the house. So I've managed to line up a, a couple of brave souls who helped me out. And we were supposed to go do Megan's house on Friday because some of her stuff is still in the house while the people are living there. And we're trying to make it so that they can have more of the house to use, even though it's an older couple. They don't need that much. But it also gets us to we can take, we're still paying insurance on it except um, it could be taken to a dwelling and let them take care of the insurance. Right now, she's paying the insurance. So <clears throat> once we do that, we can get the, get off at, from underneath the insurance. That's a, that's a bill we don't have to pay. Um, so and if I can get out of my house, there's more bills we don't have to pay. So we were planning on, okay, fine. It's August. I'm going to get the house on the market. Let's get her house, all the stuff out of it into the house. We can move in uh, this Friday because we had somebody who was able to help us. And then we'll do my house towards the end of the month because that'll give us more time to get things boxed up and ready to go. Well, unfortunately, <laughs> her renters have COVID. So we're not going into the house for a couple of weeks. And now we've like, well, we still have people lined up. I'm not going to lose them. So we're switching the plan. Now we're moving out on Friday. I, I told you that entire six minute opening to tell you that I'm moving on Friday. Uh, you know, <laughs> this, this this the first week of the first what real official week of August. Um, that being said, I don't know when I'm going to get a chance to record. I, I'm finding it hard to get things done now because I'm, my brain is just in 10,000 different places. And my goodness, what am I going to do? I don't really know how I'm going to pull all this off. Um, so I won't really have an office set up. I'll be in my office, but I won't have an office set up for me to do everything except work because everything else will still be in tattered pieces. I haven't, you know, it won't be set up for me to you know, play video games, <laughs> uh, you know, in my off time. Um, I'll probably be spending my off time setting it up so I can play video games. 
But that being said, we will be, hopefully, uh, by September, I will be at a better pace. Now, that also, uh, based off the of last episode, um, Fallout Shelter is slowly coming to an end just because I'm at the point where now where it's everything is just... It's gravy at this point. I don't. There's nothing I need to have left to prove. The entire point of the series this time through, this playthrough, this last playthrough in 2021 and 2022 was to once again show you that you do not have to spend your own money on in-game purchases when just playing the game will suffice. And I think we have proved that again and again. It was slow. It was arduous. It wasn't the pace that people would probably like it to be. Uh, especially from a content standpoint, but it is what it is, and that is how you do it. So there's nothing left to prove. I would like to keep going as much as I can, but I won't um, just start doing this all the time just because it's it's a way to get a video out. I don't want to be that guy. I've got plenty of games I'd like to play and, and share with you all. Uh, I've been trying to get back into one of them, and it just has been hard to getting into it because I don't have a lot of time. But that's the way things are, you know, that's that's my shit to figure out. So if I can manage to string together this episode, hopefully by the next time, maybe take a week, a week or two off, and then we can continue on at a regular pace until we finally say, it's done. And that could be real soon. So that being said, let's switch over to talk about the thing we're going to talk about this week. Um, yeah. Let's try to keep it to about 10 to 15 minutes if we can. That'd be great. We are uh, we are hurtling into the 21st century's the second decade of the 21st century. <clears throat> Actually, I guess it would be the third decade if you really think about it. 2020s. We had the 2000 to 2010. Yeah, it's, this is the third decade of the of, of the 21st century. Holy hell! Where did the time go? And movies are a different kind of a thing nowadays. It's not like it was when I was growing up. When I was growing up, we couldn't just say, oh, you know, I want to go watch that. It's on demand. It's on Hulu. It's on streaming service. It's right there. If I had HBO, if I wasn't stealing it, <laughs> my parents, well, we had these little things back in the 80s. We could do that. Um, if I had HBO, I could probably watch a movie that was on maybe four or 5,000 times during the month. But if I missed it, I didn't get to see it unless I recorded it. That's only if I had a VCR tape and nobody else was watching TV at the time because that's how the 80s were. You had to watch what you were recording. For some reason, in the early part of the 80s, that's how things worked. You couldn't just watch something else. And then that came along, that feature came along later. But anyways, if I wanted to watch a movie that I, and, and, and want to have a, have a hold of it for a long time, I had to record it and watch it later or go out and buy the VHS tape. After time, that would be destroyed because it would just be worn down. So we had, then we had to wait for DVDs to come out. <clears throat> or we had to make up backup copies. And, you know, there's several different ways to do this. But now, now in the, in the 21st century, we have the ability to just say, hey, I want to watch this now. Go on our streaming service, go on demand, pop it in, and start watching. It's a, it's a wonderful time to be alive, let me tell you. But one of those things that we used to watch all the time back then, back in the mid to late 80s, on HBO or whenever it was on or find a VHS tape was Predator. Yeah, Predator with Arnold Schwarzenegger and Jesse, Jesse Ventura. Jesse, the governor of Minnesota, Ventura. Uh, that's not a very good, I, my voice is going, I could do a better impression than that. Anyways, and of course, Carl Weathers, Action Jackson, Mr. Carl Weathers, uh, as well as, a, you know, a, a cast of other characters. But you all know the story. If you've never watched it, go watch the original movie because it's just a thrill to watch. Back in the golden age of John McTiernan doing things other than illegal things, um, J Arnold Schwarzenegger, at his top tip top condition, plays Dutch, a you know soldier, goes into like Central America to try to find his friends, uh, like these other soldiers with um, you know, Carl Weathers Dixon. And they don't understand what the real purpose of the mission is, but they think they're there to, like, you know, um, they're just there to actually recover the bodies, I think, at this point. But they, uh, they soon find that they are being hunted by something that is invisible and has super weapons that nobody's ever seen before. And there's a girl that can, who, is, who survived and can tell you all about it, but she doesn't speak English. And then soon, members of the of the, the team get picked off one by one until it's basically only Arnold left saying, Get to the chopper! 
and having to build, uh, you know, Boy Scout traps and arrows and things to fight off Kevin Peter Hall in a rubber suit um, over the course of two hours. End the film, you know, cue the music, and then boom, we've got an awesome, cool movie from the 80s that everybody loves. So, that is how Predator worked. Then they brought out a sequel in, in like, 1990, I think, something like that, a little bit later. Star Danny Glover, Gary Busey, uh, Elizabeth Pena, and Bill Paxton, uh, which, you know, fun fact here, Bill Paxton was in The Terminator, he was in Aliens, and he was in uh, Predator 2. So he has been killed by a Terminator, an alien, and a Predator <laughs> in, three, in, 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 you know, different movies. Uh, you know, different, he's been a part of so many franchises, and he's been killed by them all. Um, and, you know, ripped to him because he was an awesome guy and an awesome actor. Um, Game over, man! Game over! That guy. Uh, Twister, he was in Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., you know, Bill Paxson. Uh, Weird Science, Chet, huh? Know who Bill Paxson is now? All right, how about let's throw this one back there. Uh, Pat Benatar, Running with the Shadows of the Night, that video. He was in there, too. That's how long that guy's been around. Anyways, back to my point. Predator 2 came out. It was probably a decent movie compared to what you really should have think it was actually, you know, that good. It wasn't really supposed to be that good, but it actually was that good. And it brought Predator into... Uh, the inner cities, the L.A., where you know shit was going down, and the predator was there, like to to you know to hunt because he was all about hunting uh, the alpha male or the alpha species, and humans going after each other in a time of extreme heat and and volatile um, you know infra- you know city uh, so- social whatever. He was in his heyday, and Danny Glover, who's getting too old for this shit and lethal weapon, is you know gonna take on this uh, predator guy. And at the end of the movie, he beats him and gets rewarded with uh, a, a a revolver, a, a like a, a, a I don't even know how to explain it, like a 18th century revolver. More to come on that later. And then Predator went through some growing pains and having different really horrible sequels and crossovers with aliens and all kinds of bad stuff happened. And we tend to try to forget about those things. But then, but then, a movie came out this past summer called Prey. Flipping it on its end, you know, Predator, Prey. And it's uh, a Comanche, so, you know, a tribe, uh, and actors who are speaking, and oddly enough, you get the option of having Comanche, the the, 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 the uh, English subtitles on Comanche, I mean, it's, I can't even explain it to you, but you can watch the movie in Comanche with English subtitles. I mean, come on, come on, that's awesome. Anyways, that's beside the point. But the movie is about a young warrior named, I think her name's Nauru, if I, if I can pronounce that right. And she's part of a tribe, and she's a really skilled hunter and really skilled warrior, but she's not proven to her, her tribe and her brother. She's always in the shadow of her brother. And she wants to become you know, respected and, and, and be proven and, and like have those bragging rights that I can do this. But she just constantly has problems. She's a little bit hot-headed. And, of course, it's this misogyny of it all. So she tries to go out with her brother to go hunting and and just he, you know, something bad happens and he ends up uh, having to save her and, you know, take care of the, the, the actual threat. But Nauru is, is convinced that it's not, that's not it. There's something else going wrong. Well, of course, we all know there's a predator uh, and the predator's there to hunt. And the, you know, the predator only hunts those who are hunting. Or are, are a threat. If you are unarmed, if you're injured or like that, the, the predator don't care. And Naruto seems to be the only person who sees all this and understands all this and, and learns from it. And towards the end, she, you know, ends up having to do the exact same thing kind of as uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger does to fight the predator. And I don't want to give too much away. It's a spoiler alert. If you don't want to know about the movie, turn off now. And... <clears throat> at the end of the like film, she actually kill. Uh, okay, well, uh, yeah. Spoiler alert: she actually kills the predator with a pistol. A pistol that is the exact same pistol that the predators give um, Danny Glover at the end of Predator Two, the 18th century flintlock. I guess I don't know what it what it is, but it's a, you know a, 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 you pour the the gunpowder and it's got a ball. You know, that pistol. Um, like a dueling pistol, like from Hamilton. That kind of pistol. And it was a French pistol. for a guy like Rudolph Andianoli or something like that. Andanoli. I don't know what his name was, but he was French. 
And that is like a callback directly to that movie. And that's awesome that they did that. It's so funny. But then it made me start thinking about this thing. First of all, first of all, I never realized this. I never realized this. The point of Predator, the first one, they were going into the jungles to find this team of, of uh, soldiers. One of those soldiers is named and... Well, I, you know, you're gonna. It's, it's, you're already gonna know the answer to the question here when I say it. One of the soldiers is named Jim Hopper. I shit you not. I just read the script to to see if it was Harper and he was pronouncing it wrong. You know, Hopper, get to the Hopper. What are you, what are you talking about? The Hopper or the Harper? You know, is it the Hopper Valley PTA? No, it's it actually was Jim Hopper. And I'm like, wait a second. There's been like some tie-in where Jim Hopper, you know, uh, from uh, what's his, uh, what's his name from you know <laughs> from Stranger Things is um, you know the same guy and it, like was that me like was Stranger Things did they give him that name as sort of a tongue in cheek reference to it because if you think about it Hopper's survived everything in this world and he's gonna die by the hands of a predator in a couple of years I don't exactly know what year Str- Stranger Things season four or five will take place in but if that's the case he's gonna die within a couple of years. <laughs> Because I don't know if, if, if um, Predator takes place in actually 1987 or if it's set somewhere a little bit further into the future. I'm not exactly 100% clear on that. Again, but you see what I'm saying, though. Whoa! <laughs> Spoiler alert! Jim Hopper's going to die in the jungle in, South, in Central America. Second, the fact that they call, make the callback to, to Predator 2 was awesome. But if you think about it, if you watch all the way through the end of the credits, there's a scene where three Predator ships appear in orbit and go after the tribe. So we already know that shit's going to go downhill somewhere down the, down the pike because how else do the Predators get that, revol- that pistol to give to Mike Harrington in Predator 2, Jim, uh, Danny Glover's character? So eventually, yeah, they're not going to go. Now, there's supposedly going to be sequels or whatever, to, and I don't know if they're going to follow the, 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 the characters from Prey, but there's going to be some sequels to um, in that world but I, I cannot shit you enough I mean I, I cannot tell you enough that Prey, Prey is probably one of the better movies I have seen in a long time A two it's the best Predator sequel since Predator 2 or any of the Alien movies even Prometheus and uh, what's the other one Alien Dumbassery the second one with Covenant, I guess it was called. It was a damn good movie, and it had a lot of great points. It had a lot of good sequences, and my goodness, let's give it up for Amber Mid Thunder. My gosh, what a what a performance she gave! And even uh, Dakota Beavers, <laughs> that name, the he's a, he's actually a few years younger than uh, Amber. So you know, there you go. This has been a great, great, great movie for for them. So I highly recommend if you haven't watched it. I'm sorry if I've spoiled it for you, but it's a really great movie. Go watch it. You know, please do not get spoiled by this. It's still you can still watch it. You all know how it's going to end. I mean, we all know it's going to end that way because all the movies end that way. The main character lives and beats the predator. That's 90 percent of the time. That's what happens in those movies. So that you know how they get to that point is awesome. Uh, but yeah, so that's that's pretty much it. We are probably going to have to figure out a way to continue going and doing our thing uh, while I'm in this move. But if I don't, please don't despair. I'll try to get you back here as soon as possible if I can. And we'll keep going there. Oh, by the way, by the way, um, a shout out to two people on the internet. Um, Somebody who watched the Sims, no, sorry, Sim Tower uh, update, you know, how to play Sim Tower on Windows 10 video. And someone else uh, actually bought me a coffee. So I, I want to thank them for, for, for helping me out. I appreciate it tremendously. I mean, it's not... Every little bit helps. And it, right now, going into this move with everything that's been going on, it helps tremendously. So thank you again to uh, to anybody out there who has bought a t-shirt from the from the links or, you know, has bought me a coffee. I, I truly appreciate it. I thank you very much.
This will be the first test of this new idea. I've got two people in each room. I only had four, two male, two female, so I didn't want to uh, have any more babies being born, but we're going to see how well this is going to work. Mm-hmm. We're going to throw one of these ya yahoos into one in each room after they move along, so we have three in each. Of course, they won't be there long enough to cause any trouble with the women, because once the incident is resolved, it will... they'll return to their normal stations. Okay. We're down to just one. Oh, and we lost... We lost Mr. Handy, but everybody survived, and they ended up in the last room. So we can keep, at least with three, in each room, we can keep the uh, Death Claws to one floor. That's awesome. And of course, we don't have an elevator here, so they can't file down. They have to definitely turn around and come back through this gauntlet that we've set up, and that's how we do that. We'll talk to you next time. Have a good one. Bye-bye.